Hi everyone, final day at DSCI 2023 in London and we start today's video coverage with Griffin Overworks, the world leader in Overcraft. They are launching a new landing craft and to find out more with me today is uh, Patrick Morgan, design engineer at the company. Patrick, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you, but slightly uh, tired after a very busy uh, week. Uh, so what can you tell us about the new uh, Wyvern? Yeah, so we've just launched the Wyvern, which is a new class of amphibious transport military vehicle. It has a potential payload of 52 and a half tons at 50 knots at sea state three. Um, it's a more modern type of LCAC um, with electric bow thrusters and various other things that we've learned at Griffin through years of experience that we've integrated into this craft. Uh, did you design it for the domestic market or for exports or both maybe? So as a Griffin standard craft we've designed it for both. Most of our business is in the export market however we are able to accommodate um, customers specific needs um, based on the size of their mothership or the size of their payload we can accommodate for that in each situation. Uh, Patrick, I understand there's an upcoming requirement uh, here in the UK uh, for ship-to-shore connectors for the Royal Marines. Is that something you're looking at? Yeah, that's definitely something we're looking into. Um, I believe there's a tender at the end of 2024. So this is something that the company are investigating and seeing whether we could offer the new Wyvern type craft as a potential alternative. Patrick, uh, South Korea and Japan are existing users of uh, LCAC type craft. Uh, why do you feel the Wyvern uh, would be a right answer for the export market? So the Wyvern is completely ITAR free and has been already designed to Lloyd's naval ship rules. Um, so would be a perfect alternative and wouldn't have the kind of rules and regulations and the problems that you would get with ITAR type craft. And uh, what's the current status of the project? Uh, is it uh, still at design stage or are you ready, ready to produce? Uh, are you planning on uh, building a prototype? So we have spent over a year and a half doing the systems design. This is now complete. And once we get a potential customer come along and put an order in, we will do some extensive detailed design. Um, then once this is done, we will start looking at producing the craft um, earliest at the end of 2024. All right, very well. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you very much. We are now back on the SH defense booth at the SCI to cover a new ship design and actually a new OPV of Patrol vessel, which uh, Vard is proposing to the Royal Canadian Navy. To find out more with me is uh, Jens Flarup. Aira, Sales Director at SH Defense. Jens, good morning. Good morning, Xavier, and uh, welcome to the booth. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming me again. Uh, so what can you tell us about this uh, new design? So the new design is a uh, cooperation uh, between uh, Vard Marine, Fincanteri, Thales, Hiddle Shipyards and SH Defense that have provided a, an unsolicited proposal to the Royal Canadian Navy for replacement of the Kingston-class uh, vessel, Kingston vessels. The ship is uh, designed by Vard and Fincanteri, uh, 75 meters long, less than a thousand tons, and built completely around uh, the SH defense modularity, and then with a, a, a combat system and a radar setup, which you don't see on this model, unfortunately, by, by Talus, and then built locally by Hill Shipyard. So everything focused on a, a Canadian-built, Canadian-produced replacement of, a, of an existing ship. Uh, you're showing on the model uh, many modules. Uh, what uh, do you expect the, the, the missions of uh, such a vessel uh, to be? The mission of the vessel is, is really open. It, it will replace the Kingston class ship, so it will be an uh, inshore uh, coastal OPV. Um, but as the Canadian Navy uses the Kingston class ship overseas as well, the, the modularity will actually bring a very open. Uh, capability for the Navy. So the ship is built 
around a large mission bay that can then take uh, either four 40 foot containers or eight 20 foot uh, containers or cube modules. And you see uh, in the front, you see a variety of, of the replacement, anything from AUVs, uh, loitering munition, uh, oil spill uh, recovery, oil spill detection, uh, seabed warfare. Um, so so it's, it's really open concept, uh, but now the Canadian Navy have the ability to procure a ship that is flexible for the future and then uh, look at the capabilities the modules can bring and it will actually extend the lifetime but also become a capability for, for quite a few years for the Navy. Uh, last but not least, uh, Jens, uh, why do you think uh, it's important uh, for shipbuilders to take uh, the cube concept into consideration from the design stage when they want to uh, incorporate the, the, the concept into a ship design. Yeah, bringing, bringing modularity into the design of the ship gives a number of advantages. First of all, it takes quite a bit of time to design a ship and get it into service. So by adding the cube modularity, you can, you can sort of wait to buy the capability so you get a much more modern platform but also a lot of the life cycle we see on modern systems today might be three or four years and then you have some massive upgrades instead of having to upgrade the ship which is very expensive you have to get it to dry dock take it out of service you upgrade the modular capability and then you you actually lifetime extend and you add value to the ship through the whole uh, maybe 30 years uh, period it, it's going to be operational without actually having to put the ship six months, 12 months into a dry dock. Very well, Jens, thank you very much.